Hello guys, my name is Kirtan and welcome to my channel Physiology at Once. In this channel, I will be uploading many physiology videos which is easy to understand and you can replicate the same in a board examination. So please subscribe if you are new to this. So today's topic is platelets and their role in hemostasis. So what are platelets? Platelets are small and nucleate cell fragments of megakaryocytes adapted to participate in hemostasis. Hemostasis is nothing but the formation of blood clot. It can be further divided into temporary hemostasis and definitive hemostasis. We will be talking about this hemostasis later in this video. So let's talk about the functions of the platelets. Platelets play a major role in temporary hemostasis. It is called temporary because when the clot is formed in this stage, the clot can be easily washed away because there is no involvement of the fibrin. The next function is in the blood coagulation. Platelet release many factors such as platelet factor 4 and many coagulation factors such as coagulation factor 5 and 11 which helps in the process of blood coagulation. It also helps in the formation of clot retraction. Clot retraction helps in stabilizing the clot. Thrombolysis Platelet also play a major role in thrombolysis and it is very important to lyse the unwanted clot formation in the body. Phagocytosis Platelet engulf many small molecules and particles present in the blood and helps in the phagocytosis process. Storage and transport. Platelets store many chemicals such as ADP, thrombin and many such chemicals and transport it in the blood. Vascular growth. Platelets release factors such as platelet derived growth factor. Platelet derived growth factor or you can also call it as PDGF. It helps in the formation and proliferation of the vascular endothelium. So let's talk about the normal count and variations of the platelets. The normal count of platelet is 1.5 to 4 lakhs per mm cube of blood. This is, the, this is a very important value. So some variations in this normal count are thrombocytopenia or it means there is platelet count is less than 1.5 lakhs per millimeter cube of blood. It mainly occurs due to idiopathic thrombocytic purpura, which I will be talking later in this video, aplastic anemia, hypersplenism, and acute leukemia. The next variation is thrombocytosis. It is the reverse of this thrombocytopenia. In this, there is excess production of the platelets. It occurs in polycytomia varia, chronic myeloid leukemia, iron deficiency anemia chronic infection and in many more such cases. So now let's talk about the role of platelet in the hemostasis process. So as discussed now, hemostasis is the arrest of bleeding or the formation of the clot. It occurs in two major steps, temporary hemostasis and definitive hemostasis. Let's talk about temporary hemostasis now. It is the first and important step in which the platelets aggregate at the site of injury and seal the opening in the vessel. So it's the first step in the process of hemostasis. As the platelet aggregation can be washed away, it is called as temporary hemostatic plug. As I told you before, it is called as temporary hemostasis because there is formation of the temporary hemostatic plug. And this occurs due to there is no formation of fibrin clot in this temporary hemostasis process. So the clot is not stable and it is washed away. It is called as platelet thrombus and not clot in this step. It depends on platelet addition, platelet aggregation and platelet activation and release. So let's talk about it one by one. Platelet addition. So addition means adhering to something or sticking to something. So platelets have a high affinity to adhere to the exposed vessel wall. They have a high affinity to stick to the vessel wall and it is mainly attracted by exposed collagen and wall willebrand factor. These two are the main factors which attract the platelets towards the exposed vessel wall. It is also controlled by many other factors like depth and injury. So when the degree or depth of the injury is more, there is more number of platelets involvement and the platelet addition is more. Site of injury. The sites such as mucocutaneous tissue injury involves major platelet thrombus formation. Age of individual. 
when the age of the individual increases there is decrease in the platelet formation and decrease in the platelet function so there is decreased platelet addition in elderly people hematocrit so when the rbc count is increased the rbc pushes the platelets and the leukocytes to the sides of the blood vessels or the margins of the blood vessels so when they are in the margins of the blood vessels it will be easier for the platelets to form the platelet thrombus speed of blood flow when the speed of the blood flow is increased there will be less activity of the platelet in the platelet thrombus formation so when there is decreased blood flow it would be useful in the formation of platelet thrombus size of blood vessel when the blood vessel size is increased there will be more flow of the platelets and more formation of platelet thrombus next step is platelet aggregation it follows immediately after the platelet addition step the platelet aggregation step is promoted by three main factors fibrinogen glycoprotein 2b 3a and thrombin these platelets are then activated and release chemicals from their granules like adp and platelet activating factor which further facilitates the aggregation process so it is like a cascade process in which one step stimulates the next step this process facilitates the formation of the temporary hemostatic plug and the formation of the clot is also initiated in this step the next one is platelet activation and release the activated platelets in the previous step release various chemicals from their granules to the exterior via cannulicular system this cannulicular system helps in the transport of the chemicals from the platelets to the exterior the mechanisms of the platelet release are through platelet activation factor this platelet activation factor is a chemical which is also released by the neutrophils and macrophages this platelet activation factor acts to the g proteins and releases or activates the phospholipase c phospholipase c and diacyl glycerol this diacyl glycerol further enhances the cytoplasmic calcium of the platelets and improves the motility of the actin filaments present in the platelets itself this motility of the filaments in the platelets activate the granules and release many contents from the granules to the exterior via exocytosis coming to the next mechanism it is through thromboxane and serotonin the dag or diacyl glycerol activates the phospholipase a2 enzyme this phospholipase a2 enzyme converts the phospholipid into arachidonic acid this arachidonic acid again converts into endoperoxides and this finally gives rise to thromboxane a2 thromboxane a2 is a potent vasoconstrictor and it also helps in the formation of platelet aggregation platelets also produce serotonin which which also is a vasoconstrictor and promotes the platelet aggregation same as the thromboxane a2 the next mechanism is through the thrombospondin and thrombonectin formation this thrombospondin and thrombonectin form is produced from the platelet itself this helps in the contraction of the microfilaments which further helps in the exocytosis of the granules present in the platelets through the cannulicular system now let's talk about some other hemostatic functions of the platelets role in blood coagulation when the platelets are activated the coagulant activity of the platelet increases so there is production of platelet factor 4 which acts as a cofactor in the blood coagulation it also synthesizes many coagulation factors such as factor 5 and factor 11 and it also converts prothrombin into thrombin it also play a main role in the clot retraction the platelet filopedia filopedia is an outgrowth of the platelet outgrowth of the platelet cell it extends into the fibrin clot and attaches to it the shrinkage of the platelet causes internalization of the fibrin that causes clot retraction so when the platelet so imagine this as a platelet 
and this has many outgrowth which is nothing but the philopedia this philopedia attaches or extends into the fibrin clot this is the fibrin clot so when the philopedia attaches to the fibrin clot and when it shrinks the clot also shrinks and it is internalized so due to this there is clot retraction and it seals the opening it also facilitates in the wound healing process the this process of clot retraction helps in the stabilization of the clot it also helps in the thrombolysis process the platelets have both profibrinolytic and antifibrinolytic actions in the fibrinolytic fibrinolytic actions there is production of thrombospondin tpa and plasmin and in the antifibrinolytic action the it produces plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 and a2 antiplasmin since it has both the actions the antifibrinolytic action is more dominant because the platelet thrombus the platelet thrombus which is formed in the temporary hemostatic temporary hemostasis process has pro fibrin fibrinolytic action so to compensate this the platelets usually have predominantly antifibrinolytic actions so now let's talk about idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura it is one of the common dysfunctions of the platelets it is a primary autoimmune purpura you may be wondering what is purpura purpura is nothing but the formation of visible spots in the skin which occurs mainly due to the internal hemorrhage internal hemorrhage it is mainly characterized by the thrombocytopenia or the decreased number of the platelet cells which occurs due to the formation of antibody against the platelets so there is formation of anti platelets antibody these antibodies attaches to the platelet membrane and these platelets are phagocytes in the spleen these antibodies make the platelets vulnerable to the phagocytosis in the spleen it is again divided into two forms childhood itp and adult itp the childhood itp is very common and it is less severe it is common in both the genders it usually resolves in 6 months as it is not very severe the adult itp is very less common and it's mainly seen in the females it is severe the common feature of idiopathic thrombocytic purpura is the bleeding it occurs due to the decreased number of the platelet cells and so there is no formation of the clot so how can you diagnose this disease you can diagnose it by the thrombocytopenia by checking the platelet count the anemia the anti platelet antibodies in the body the how do you treat it they treat it mainly by the administration of the corticosteroids and splenectomy by doing the splenectomy you actually decrease the phagocytosis in the spleen so that's it for today guys if you like this video please share like and comment and also don't forget to subscribe thank you guys